Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and today we're going to be testing this 50-foot section of LMR 400 equivalent cable with a watt meter to see if it's performing within specifications. The cable we'll be testing is a section of SureCall 400 cable, which is advertised as performing to LMR 400 specifications, although there's no data for the particular cable in question that we're going to test. So we're going to see if it does perform as well as LMR 400 is advertised. Performing tests like this is essentially a bread and butter skill for the radio technician and it doesn't require a lot of sophisticated test equipment. Uh, I'm just using this meter, a dummy load, a transmitter at the frequency of interest, and of course our cable that will be under test. Our jumper and adapter stack has been tested and you can see my loss at the frequencies of interest is a quarter of a dB. The meter used doesn't have to be an expensive meter such as this tail wave. You can do this with a simple meter like this or like this. The important thing is that the meters rated to operate within the frequency range of the transmitter you're going to be performing the test with. After we pull the observed data from our meter, we're going to go ahead and run through a couple of different very simple formulas to convert it to decibel milliwatts and then we'll see exactly how much loss is in the cable. Coax cable is typically the feed line of choice and this is a like an RG8 size feed line. It's got uh, two type in male connectors at either end of it and it's brand new in the package. The uh, connectors are crimp type connectors and they're heat shrunk with glue lined heat shrink at the very ends. Uh, cables get damaged in service and, they, and over time they can uh, get water inside of them and uh, other issues and if you see less performance out of your equipment than you had previously a good place to start is checking your antenna and feed line. For our first test we're going to take our transmitter and we have it connected to our meter. We go ahead and set it for forward power and we have it set for a 5 watt range. First we check the power of our transmitter into our load and you can see we are 3 watts into the load. Now we record our data. Now what we do is, is we connect our transmitter to our feed line and then our feed line to our meter terminated with the load. Now we take our transmitter and we're about 2.2 watts. The first video I did on checking coaxial cable loss with a watt meter, we use this formula here, which essentially in our case here, we do 10 times log, 3 watts plus 30. Which using our scientific calculator, we would solve like this. thirty four point seven seven decibel milliwatts. Now we'll solve our next ten times log two point two plus thirty thirty three point four two. So now we just subtract our measured cable under test power from our reference power and and that is your loss. This is another simple formula to find the same answer. So in this example here, so this gives us our ratio. And when we 
hook up the cable to my cell master, we can see it's 1.33 dB of loss in the cable. We can see here on the Times microwave site for LMR 400 at 450 megahertz for the run of 50 feet that our maximum cable assembly insertion loss is on the order of 1.5 dB so we're well within that specification. It's easy to see with a few simple formulas and a watt meter, a dummy load, and a transmitter at the frequency of interest that it's possible to make measurements of your radio systems losses almost as accurately as a much more expensive piece of test equipment. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.